I am at RW Screw today here in Ohio, and I just kind of wanted to give you a tour of what's going on behind the scenes. But what I do want to show you, if you'll follow me, is all of the automation that they have recently invested in. So excited to show you. So please come follow me. Well, we've made it to this gorgeous Hydromat Eclipse machine where we have 12 CNC's in one. Last time I was here, it was phenomenal to know that it used to take on average 10 weeks to get the job done which now they're doing in 25 seconds now what happens when you get 25 seconds of parts being shot shipped off of this machine every time right well sometimes maybe every now and again bad parts come through right so how do you fix that well if you look inside this cell right here there is a camera system that allows every part to be measured within micron it'll actually switch it from good part to bad part there's a gray little tube right over here for every bad part that goes through so now we know through automation that all every single part that goes to a customer within microns is being said good without having someone to hand measure every single one but let's move on to the next cell come on Automation, automation equals domination. And that's what we have here at this cell behind me. This handsome young man is running actually four machines right now. And it used to be one person per machine, loading, unloading. I mean, how boring is that, right? Look at all of these parts sitting here. Could you imagine doing that day in and day out? And then when it gets a little slow and monotonous, sometimes we put a part in backwards. You know what happens when we put a part in backwards? Potentially up to $10,000 of tools are broken. The machine is down for a day. And then you have scrap parts as well. When they automated all four of these systems, the uptick in production was, I believe, around 30%. And now it's reduced all break time it's reduced the ability or the probability even of a user error and that's the most important thing I think or at least one of the most important things about automation and I know this young man behind me is happy to be doing what he's doing right now no more dull dirty and dangerous but let's move on to the next automation cell because this place is booming with automation RW screw so I had to stop by this one and I'll tell you why. With the camera being here, taking a look at this machine, what year do you guys think this machine was made? I'll pause for a second because I'd love to see some answers in the comment section. Did, it, did you guess? Well, it's in the 80s actually. The 80s is when this machine was made. And the reason I wanted to stop by is because some of the older machines can actually be automated and allow for some of that dull, dirty, and boring, or dangerous as they say, to be removed. So. With this thing moving, with the automation cell, it actually allows people to do more and actually enjoy their life. With that being said, this is what automation can do here. So it's not just about the latest and greatest and newest machines. If you have a machine shop, just like RW Screw does here, and you have some older machines, investment in an automation cell will allow you to upgrade those older machines and get them going. But there's even more to show, so come on. I see automation and I see you. Yes, that's right. We have both here. I see automation and we're really privileged to have you watching the channel as well. I'm looking at three really incredible robotic cells. These are not collaborative ones, but robotic cells. And these cells have actually allowed RW Screw for one person to run all three machines. Again, it goes back to being able to run more and accurately and there's measurement systems in here and camera systems and it allows for this grinding cell to be sure that every piece is coming off correctly and the reason I bring that up is because talking with my friend Bill he was saying that one part might not come off correctly so there's some compensation in the offsets which we all kind of do that right but the problem is it wasn't really in the offsets is where the incorrection was. It might have been in the part itself. So even though there was an offset on one part, the next 10 parts are actually incorrect because the part previous to that was good, was actually good. So automation cells like this, automation cells like the older ones, but we are not done yet. I got more machines to show you. Let's keep going. Now, it doesn't get much more obvious than this. I mean, think about it, a redundant job, and I don't see any people around, do you guys? I certainly don't, but every single one of these shelves is hours and hours and hours and hours and hours of unmanned work. How important is that to allow people like this young lady over here to keep doing what she's doing there while this machine runs here? Again, we're trying to do more with a labor shortage and everything we put into it has to go into automation. It's how we compete on a global scale but this is still not the last I have two more stops for you so if you'll join me I would love to have you for a couple more 
Cobots, robots, bar feed, pallet change, you name it, everyone's getting into automation. You can see a Cobot cell here. I mean, it seems like it could be complicated, but if we break it down to its basics, all it's really doing is setting up jobs for reaming, and it repeats that job over and over. To my knowledge, what I learned is every single tray is about an hour of work. So you set it up, you forget about it, you move on with your life, you make money, you be more productive, and you get quality parts everywhere you go all the time. How many times do we need to say automation is not taking jobs, it is removing dull, dirty, dangerous. Let's get excited about automation. Let's implement it in our facility so we can continue to compete globally. One more stop for you though, so come on. Okay, we've made it to the last cell here, which is actually developed by RW Screw. Now, could you imagine every single one of these products being hand measured over and over and over and needing, I don't know, half a dozen, a dozen, two dozen? How many people do you need to measure every single one of these bins every single day? And what's really happening inside this machine is this measuring every angle of it. And the flash that you see, pardon the flashes, it look away if you're going to have a seizure or a stroke, but the flashes is actually a camera taking a picture every single time to make sure it's good or bad. If it's good, it goes into this bin. If it's bad, it goes into a bin on the inside. Just to kind of bring this all full circle, this is a very quick tour of RW Screw because I needed to show you guys what the automation is like here, how they've implemented it in their factory, and the fact that they're growing like crazy from massive machines like the hydro, hydromatic clips to smaller stuff like what you see here, but every piece is either incredibly accurate and needs all this automation, or the fact that everyone's battling for that labor shortage, or the fact that we're just trying to be more productive and make more money. Isn't that really what it's all about? So this is RW Screw, and this is MTD CNC. We appreciate you. I hope you've enjoyed this tour and all of this really cool automation from the newest, latest, and greatest machines to machines in the 80s. I won't say how old I am, but I will say that I was in the 70s, so maybe I can get automated as well. Hope you enjoyed the tour.